Okay, here we're going to talk about inhalational agents. These are your um, your anesthetic gases like sevoflurane, desflurane, um, nitrous is an inhalational agent as well. So these are all of the anesthetics we can use um, with our anesthetic machine to deliver to someone to either induce or maintain a state of general anesthesia. These are very useful because we have a reliable way of predicting someone's depth of anesthesia with our inhalational agents. This standardized um, scale of one MAC, um, that is to say the minimum alveolar concentration of the gas that is required to produce um, a certain effect. So one MAC is the percent of gas in the alveoli, so percent of gas in the alveoli required to prevent movement in 50% of people um, in response to a skin incision. And this was classically defined as the incision for a laparotomy, which is quite a large incision. Um, so depending on how stimulating your um, procedure will be in comparison to this may give you an indication of how likely a person is to move uh, with that uh, your particular incision. Now there are a few specific statements in here which I'd like to break down so this is very clear. Um, for one, we're talking about the percentage of gas in the alveoli required to prevent movement. So we know that um, obviously the gas is going to be working at your brain, that is the um, effect tissue, um, but for some reason we're able to measure the gas in the alveoli to tell us what's happening in the brain, so we'll talk about why that is. Um, and then it has this caveat of being at one atmosphere of barometric pressure. So we will talk about why that is the case as well. Different inhalational agents will have um, different concentrations of gas required to produce one max. So for SIVO, um, you need a, a two 2% of end tidal gas to produce a MAC of 1, which is to say that 50% of people will not move with your uh, skin incision when you give 2% of SIVO. For DES, you need 6.3% end tidal DES, and for nitrous, you would actually need 104%, which is obviously not possible, um, and that makes nitrous not a very good inhalational anesthetic to use on its own because um, even if you're running as much nitrous as as uh, as possible, people are going to move more than 50% of the time. Now, obviously, we wouldn't be satisfied with a 50% chance of someone moving with a general anesthetic. So you could use opioids to decrease your MAC requirements, or you could uh, run someone at a higher percentage of gas. So if you do um, 1.3 times MAC, that should cover about 95% um, for movement. And then also keep in mind that your MAC requirements um, will decrease with age. Um, there are a number of factors that will decrease your minimum alveolar concentration, but if your age is over 65, your MAC for SIVO drops to 1.45, and your DES MAC would be 5.5. One seven. The general rule here is that um, MAC will decrease by about 6% um, per decade of life over 20 years old. So by the time you're 65, um, that is, that's four and a half decades. Um, so that would be four and a half times six. So you're looking at a 25% um, decrease in your MAC um, by the time you're 65, which is basically what this is. Um, so this is 25% reduction more or less from your 2% SIVO when you're a young adult. Now all these percentages of gas that will achieve um, your one MAC is all dependent on this occurring at one atmosphere of barometric pressure. So we'll talk about why that is. And that is, it is the pressure of the gas in the alveoli that we care about. This pressure of gas in the alveoli equilibrates with the pressure the gas will exert in the blood and also the pressure that the gas will exert in the central nervous system. And this is, of course, at equilibrium. 
But in the definition of Mach, we're talking about the percent of gas in the alveoli, and now I'm telling you about the pressure of the gas in the alveoli. So just remember Dalton's law of partial pressures, which states that the partial pressure exerted by any given gas in a mixture of gases is equal to its proportion of that total gas. So let's say we have a column of gas here, which we've constructed. We'll say that this top layer is 2% sevo, sevo fluorine. Um, let's make it 30% oxygen and 68% nitrogen, just whatever is left. And we know that the pressure of all of this is going to add up to 760 millimeters of mercury because this is barometric pressure at one atmosphere. Um, so we're assuming we're at sea level here. Um, and then these different gases will have a um, partial pressure that totals this 760. So the partial pressure of any gas, so let's say the partial, the fraction of our inhalational gas times the barometric pressure will equal the partial pressure of that gas. So our 2% 2 SIVO, 2% 2 of 760, 2% SIVO times 760 millimeters mercury is equal to 15.2 millimeters of mercury. And then so that will be our partial pressure of SIVO in this mixture. So this is 15, basically, 15 millimeters of mercury. And then we do the same thing for these other gases and our oxygen would be 228 millimeters of mercury and our nitrogen would be 517 millimeters of mercury. And the reason the partial pressure is important and not the fact that it's 2% SIVO is that it's the partial pressure of the gas over top of a liquid that drives the gas into the liquid. So it's partial pressure of a gas that drives it into the blood. So not the fact that it's 2% SIVO, but the fact that the partial pressure is 15. And so this 15.2 millimeters of mercury is the partial pressure of SIVO at one mac. So this is the partial pressure of um, that, that we want to see a sevoflurane in your alveoli to produce a MAC of 1. So let's do another example here where instead of being at uh, one atmosphere, we are at a higher altitude where our barometric pressure is going to be 500 millimeters of mercury. So we're up on a mountain somewhere and we're still using 2% of some gas, let's say it's sevo. Um, the partial pressure that this gas is exerting here is actually only 10 millimeters of mercury. And so this is too low. So now there's only 10 millimeters of mercury um, driving this gas into the blood and therefore to the central nervous system instead of 15. So although we still have 2% SIVO, um, the effect of this will be too low. Just want to take a sidestep here and talk about using volatiles at altitudes. Um, and this is important because our vaporizers are not all the same. So the DES vaporizer does not operate in the same way as our SIVO vaporizer. So our SIVO vapor vaporizer will deliver um, a fixed partial pressure of a gas, whereas our DES vaporizer will deliver a fixed percentage of gas delivers fixed percentage of gas. So although they both have dials on them that show percentages, when you set your SIVO um, dial to, to 2%, what you're actually saying is, I want, uh, I want this vaporizer to output a partial pressure of 15. So it is calibrated in a way that when you set the dial to 2%, it outputs at 15 millimeters of mercury. So if we're at sea level here and we have our anesthetic machine set our dial to 2%, it will output 15 millimeters of mercury. If we hike our anesthetic machine up a mountain when we're halfway up where the atmospheric pressure is lower, it will still output 15 millimeters of mercury 
and then even at the top where maybe our 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 barometric pressure is 500 it will still be 15 and this is good because it's the partial pressure of the gas that drives it into your blood which causes it to have the effect so the effect of your sevo no matter what altitude you're at will be the same because that vaporizer delivers a constant pressure technically the percentage of gas here will be higher it will be i guess three percent that's being delivered by our our vaporizer set to deliver two percent but the important thing is that we still have 15 millimeters of mercury with des on the other hand it delivers the actual percent of what the dial is set to so let's set our dial um to 6.3 percent which is one mac for des um, the barometric pressure at the bottom here being 760 so we'll have a partial pressure of 48 millimeters of mercury which is good and it will have good effect at this partial pressure but at the top of this mountain where our barometric pressure is only 500 millimeters of mercury the partial pressure of this gas which is still being output at 6.3 percent will only be 31.5 millimeters of mercury so the partial pressure is only two-thirds of what it was um, at, at your amount required to produce one max so this would be too low so don't think too hard about this example i gave you over here where we used sevo and said that um, it was at, at an altitude of 500 millimeters of mercury because technically actually our sevo vaporizer would always output 15 millimeters of mercury i should have used des for this example if i wanted to be completely accurate about changing your partial pressures of anesthetic gases at altitude. We said the partial pressure of the gas will drive it into the blood, so we'll show that happening, and importantly, that partial pressure also equilibrates between the different compartments. So let's have a gas phase here and a blood compartment. Let's say that we have 2% SIVO, which doesn't really matter. The important thing is the fact that we're at one atmosphere and the partial pressure of that SIVO is going to be 15 millimeters of mercury. So these gas particles, which are floating around at a concentration of 2%, exerting a pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury on this blood compartment, will dissolve themselves inside the blood so now we have gas that is dissolved in the blood and we will reach an equilibrium where these gas particles are trying to leave the blood at a pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury so we can say that effectively the partial pressure of the gas dissolved in the blood is also 15 millimeters of mercury when you breathe the gas in this is what's actually happening at the capillary level so this is your alveoli, and here's your capillary, where the partial pressure of the gas here is equilibrating with the partial pressure um, in the blood. So let's just show that in a more realistic looking setting where we have our 2% SIVO. And again, doesn't matter, it's the 15 millimeters of mercury of partial pressure that we're interested in. This will equilibrate with the blood also at 15 millimeters of mercury. So we know that our pressure of gas in the alveoli will equal our pressure of that gas in the blood. And then this blood will go to our central nervous system, also staying at 15 millimeters of mercury, and transmitting that same pressure to the tissue in the central nervous system where it's having its effect. So the pressure of the gas in the blood is equal to the pressure in the CNS. So the pressure in the alveoli is equal to the pressure in the CNS and that of course is at equilibrium. Let's extend this drawing out to show that the same thing is happening. So some of these particles now will move into the blood or into the central nervous system tissue as well. 
and equilibrate at 15 millimeters of mercury of pressure. The actual amount of gas that it takes to saturate this blood compartment at the pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury will depend on the solubility of the gas. So different gases have different, um, different blood gas partition coefficients. So our solubility can be defined by how soluble it is in the air versus in your blood or between your blood and the central nervous system. So from the gas going from the air to the blood, we talk about the blood gas partition coefficient. For SIVO, that is 0 0.65, and that is to say that there is 0 0.65 particles of, of gas dissolved in the blood phase for every one particle in the gas phase. So let's just make this diagram a little bit more accurate. We'll say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 particles up here in sort of an infinite reservoir of gas. Um, to get this ratio, we would dissolve, well, six, six and a half particles in our blood. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I already did this. And then the solubility coefficient between your blood and the central nervous system is 1.7. So that's to say that there will be 1.7, um, dissolved particles in the central nervous system for every one dissolved particle in your blood. Um, that would mean at equilibrium, there's going to be 10 particles dissolved in the central nervous system. Henry's law states that the concentration of the gas in the solution, so how much gas is dissolved in a solution is equal to the solubility of that gas times the partial pressure forcing that gas into the solution. The solubility of the gas in the blood turns out to be very important for how quickly the gas will have its effect when you start breathing it. Now let's go into some examples to show you what happens in a person.